Hello and welcome back to the Air Armoury, I'm JRH and today I'm looking at the RO72 or as it's better known, the Panther Deluxe Air Pistol. So you've seen this gun briefly in a couple of videos already. The RO72 is a spring piston brake barrel air pistol. It was manufactured by a company called Gun Toys SRL in Italy in the mid to late 70s, although it is often associated with a number of other manufacturers and distributors. So I'll talk a bit about the provenance of this gun later on. Now this gun has some significance for me. Uh, not just the RO72 in general, but this particular gun, as this was the first air gun I ever fired. Uh, so this is where it all began. Now this was my dad's gun, and I remember using it to shoot model aeroplanes, must have been 15, 20 years ago, uh, under proper supervision of course. Uh, this gun though is now mine, as I recently traded it with my dad in exchange for my Westlake B2 air rifle. Uh, so let's take a closer look at the RO72 on the bench. Before I look at the features of the gun, I just wanted to go back to something I touched on in the introduction with regard to the manufacturer and distributors. As we've already said, this gun is made by Gun Toys. You can see their GT logo there, and the model is the RO72, which you can see marked on it there. Uh, but they were known as a lot of other things, and that's because we're, they were kind of quite generic guns and they were often relabeled or rebranded when they were imported. Now I have here my copy of the Blue Book of Air Guns and if I turn to the page for Gun Toys it says they are a manufacturer of inexpensive barrel cocking air pistols and pistol carbines located in Milano, Italy beginning about early 1970. And then uh, the entry about the RO72 so this model was also sold under the name Scale Mead Hotshot Deluxe, Sussex Armoury Panther Deluxe, Classic Deluxe and IGI 203. Now I have some pictures here of some RO72 boxes. And this first one is clearly the IGI 203. Uh, next one is a blue boxed version of the RO72, which is the Panther Deluxe in the corner. Uh, next one is a red boxed version, again the RO72, except this one isn't labelled as the Panther Deluxe. And this last picture, uh, it's not actually the RO72, as you can see it's the RO71, but I've included this for illustrative purposes as it has a big Sussex Armoury logo on it. Now as far as I'm aware this was just a sticker, and I think that was actually how the uh, Sussex Armoury versions of the RO72 came, just in a standard box but with their logo on. Um, and as well as Scale Mead and Sussex Armoury, another big company that was involved in importing these, albeit maybe not to the UK, was Umarex. And I have here a copy um, of what I assume is part of the instruction manual uh, that would have come with one of their guns. As you can see, it is all in German. Uh, this particular gun, I'm told, was purchased from the Sussex Armoury in the late 70s. As I said, it is a spring piston gun with a standard brake barrel action, so by cocking it like that, it compresses the spring in the compression chamber there. It's 35 centimetres or 14 inches long, with an 18.5 centimetre or just over 7 inch rifle barrel, and it weighs 980 grams, or just under 2 pounds 3 ounces. Now this gun is in 177 calibre, which I believe was the only calibre it was made in, and you can see the calibre marking there. 177. Uh, it has a serial number on the side here. Uh, I'm not sure how many of these guns were made but this one is 058350. Now the stock or frame of the gun, whatever you want to call it, is made of brown plastic. I guess this pattern is supposed to resemble wood, but it's not really fooling anyone. It's supposed to be a knot or something up there. And although this one has a brown frame, uh, which actually quite a few of them did. They were usually made of black plastic, hence the name Panther. 
and the blue book I showed you earlier on actually says uh, describes it as having a one-piece black plastic buttstock. And whilst the stock doesn't look fantastic, it's actually really not too bad. It feels quite sturdy and it's very comfortable to hold, especially with this thumb rest here and the checkering on the grip. The metal parts on this gun are all steel and they are painted rather than blued. And the finish on this particular gun has chipped a fair bit over the years, especially on the underside of the barrel, presumably where it's been rested on things to shoot. The Sussex Armoury also offered this gun with a skeleton shoulder stock, uh, at least as an optional extra. I have a couple of photos from their catalogues here, uh, which show the shoulder stock. Uh, the first one at the top here is from their 1978 to 1979 catalogue, and the bottom one is from their 1980 catalogue. You can see the shoulder stocks here. Um, I think that definitely would have been a useful addition to the gun, and I've actually thought of making one myself, but I don't really want to muck up the end cap here. But if I can ever find a spare end cap, or I'm in a position to make a new one on a lathe, then I might try and make that um, skeleton stock and weld it onto that end cap. The trigger on the RO72 uh, is single stage, uh, and it's actually really not a too bad a trigger for such an inexpensive gun and surprisingly it is also adjustable. You can see the hole in the bottom of the stock here uh, for making the adjustments, but you can actually see that a lot better if I take the stock off quickly, and I will do that now because it's quite simple, I only have to remove four screws. Two on that side, and then a matching two on the back, or the other side. So with those undone, I can just lift the action out of the stock and there you can see a lot better view of the single plastic trigger adjustment screw which can be changed to adjust the pull weight and as you can see from this uh, the gun doesn't have a safety. Now I'm going to put the stock back on now uh, I'm not going to disassemb disassemble it any further um, as I will soon be making a video on how to strip down and clean and re-lubricate a spring piston air gun and for a number of reasons which you'll see in that video I am actually intending to use this pistol for that gun uh, so keep an eye out for that or subscribe to the air armory to get a notification um, as I'm not quite sure when I'll put that up but it will hopefully be in the near future you can also see there's another screw through the grip there, um, that is literally just to keep the two halves of the plastic grip together. So you don't actually need to take that out to take the stock off the gun. With the gun put back together, I'm going to move on to look at the sights. The front sight is a globe style sight with interchangeable elements, which you can remove by undoing this, unscrewing this white bit and putting a new element in. Uh, the only one I've got for this gun though is just a simple post that you can see there. And this front sight is removable, you just undo this screw on the side and then slide the whole thing off the end of the barrel. The rear sight is actually quite good quality, uh, it's adjustable for elevation, you can see the wheel here and windage at the side. And I really actually quite like a nice big metal chunky knob for the windage adjustment. It also has a nice feature, and with the notch at the back you actually have four options. You can see the different notches there. And to change those, you push in on this small spring-loaded button and then you can rotate that plate at the back. So you can see I've put a square notch on it. Change it back to the, my usual one. Now, overall, I don't really like the sights on this gun. Uh, I'm generally not a fan of globe sights, which doesn't help. But also, the gun shoots very high over short distances. Uh, I mean, that have to hold well below the target, which is a bit of a worry for a gun designed to be used at short ranges. And I've also found that when the rear sight is set to its lowest position, the uh, elevation adjustment wheel there largely obscures the notch you're looking through at the back. If I try and line that up with the front post, put it a bit more in the centre, you can see that that. Um, adjustment wheel almost completely covers the front sight, or the front post. 
I'm now going to test the accuracy of this gun and take 10 shots at one of these 14 centimeter square targets. Uh, slightly shorter distance than my usual, it's probably about 7 or 8 meters to make sure I can actually hit the target. And to do that, I'll be using 8.4 grain Air Arms Diablo Field pellets. Here is my target. Now whilst I've got half of my pellets inside this central black area, overall the accuracy isn't great as there were a lot of strays. But this is an inexpensive brake barrel pistol with open sights that's 35 plus years old. So I think the accuracy is excusable. And this one up here, I think you can actually discount because on that one, I think I forgot to hold low. So it actually filed centrally, causing it to go much higher. Now, the pistol isn't designed to have a scope fitted as it doesn't have a scope rail on it. Uh, however, if you're inventive, as my dad was, you can find a solution to get around anything. And he did actually have a scope mounted, which was this Sussex Armoury 4x20 scope. And to do that, I'll show you quickly. First of all, remove the front sight to get it out of the way. I forgot you actually have to take this screw all the way out. And then that front sight comes off. And then to actually mount the scope, remove the rear sight, one screw there, and then there's another screw under the elevation wheel. Okay, you lost that screw. So then to fit the scope, you've got these two holes uh, which held on the rear sight. So what he did there was cut a small bit of metal, uh, just the right size, uh, kind of the right dimensions for a scope rail. In a certain way these have to go in. Okay, there we go. So, with that tightened on there, that is a makeshift scope rail. Which means we can then mount our scope. And there you have a scoped pistol. Now, because the gun wasn't designed for that scope, I'm not actually going to bother testing the accuracy with it, but it does, of course, improve it. I'm now going to test the power of the pistol. I'm going to fire 10 shots over my chronograph. And again, I'll be using those Air Arms Diablo Field pellets. Here I have my chronograph test sheet. I've done all my calculations and I can tell you that this gun currently has a power of only 0 0.69 foot-pounds, which is just a fraction of the six foot-pound legal limit for pistols in the UK. So it's not winning power gun of the year, 
but I could have told you that before I tested it. These guns were never designed to be very powerful when they were new, let alone 35 or 40 years later. Now this gun would definitely benefit from a new mainspring, though even that won't make it particularly powerful, but a pistol like this doesn't need much power really. Now I do have a new mainspring for it, uh, but it's not a direct replacement as I haven't found anywhere that I can get one. Uh, this is just the nearest one I could find and it doesn't fit quite right, so it does need a little bit of adjusting to shorten it, uh, which I'll hopefully get around to doing at some point. Now, despite this being an old, inexpensive pistol with low power, there is actually a small niche market for these pistols. Right, it's film time. I've got my popcorn, I'm just sitting back to enjoy a bit of Star Wars, and I've gone for my old favourite, Return of the Jedi. Wait a minute, that gun looks a bit familiar. So the RO72 was actually the basis for one of the guns in Star Wars. Now I found a picture online here of the one used, um, and numerous websites inform me that this is called the DL-18 Blaster Pistol. Now this is a favourite of Jabba the Hutt's guards, but was also used in the film by characters including Luke Skywalker and Han Solo. And you can actually see some stills I've taken from the film the one I paused on earlier on and this one quite interesting you can actually even see the cocking link up in there so comparing the actual pistol to the one from the film uh, it's obviously been painted uh, it's had a few bits added on here and some kind of sight and then this front sight just remove again clearly then just been removed and fitted on upside down. There you've seen the RO72 air pistol. So what can I say about this gun? Well, not much really. It's a generic break barrel plinking pistol, uh, but it's good fun nonetheless. This one could just do with a bit of a tune up. Now I keep this one knocking around really for sentimental value as much as anything else. I don't shoot it very much and if it broke I wouldn't bother replacing it with another one. Uh, if you are interested in getting one, either to shoot or to make a replica Star Wars prop, then you can find them for sale often enough on gun sites and forums, and they're worth about £50. Now I've seen them for more than that, and I've seen them for less, but £50 is kind of an average price you could expect to pay for one. Now I hope you've enjoyed the video, uh, if so be sure to check out the other Air Armoury videos and subscribe to the channel. So until next time, keep your arms in the air.